Good morning, this is Sarah, your healthy carnivore in the UK with um, with her 112 day update. 112 days. Definitely never done anything for 112 days before. That's probably going to start my every video moving forwards because it's going to be, wow, I've done 115. Never done that before. So it's pretty optimistic. Um, also, we're going to have sun tomorrow. We're apparently having some sun in the UK tomorrow for the first time in two weeks. So I'm going to be fighting my team members to be the ones standing outside with the children tomorrow. So I can just stand there with the sun on my face the whole entire day. I have three interviews lined up. That's all I'm really going to talk about. I haven't got anything else planned other than that. But normally things pop into my head. Um, <clears throat> I'm a bit nervy today though because my son's doing his car racing thing today so um so i just have to work through that i just have to work through those nerves and hope that at six o'clock tonight he comes back to us and has his dinner and we carry on with our lives i've got three interviews the one that i'm going to work on the hardest though is my one next week because i'm on dave mack channel again he's looking for more interviews he's obviously going through a quiet patch so he's asked for interviews and i didn't want to do another one straight away because i wanted to wait until i'd lost a load more weight but i thought hey, go on you're more optimistic you're more positive you're you've got more days under your belt you've got some new health benefits to talk about some life changes to talk about you're generally more optimistic overall so i think Fingers crossed, fingers crossed that next weekend there will be another small weight loss, however small. Half a pound a week is enough for me. There are people that would quit something if they don't lose three pound a week. And I'm thinking just half a pound a week is good enough for me. That would be a big difference between now and next year. Um, so we keep going. And then the week after that on the... Um, 23rd I think it is I've got an interview with a lovely Carl uh, one of my carnivore brothers of the primal lifestyle I'm going to be going on there that's going to be more laid back because with Dave Mack I feel like I've really got to go in there with you know I feel like I've got to because he's now got 80,000 subscribers I feel like I've got to go in there with a real bam starting thing and say all the good stuff first to make sure that people watch it because we want to get his channel up to the 100,000 by the end of the year. Will he do it? Will he not do it? That's going to be fun. And the one with Carl is probably going to be a little more chill, a little more laid back, a bit more British. Um, and then in, in January, I've got my interview with um, Christy on the 4th of Jan. I worked out that my birthday is a weekend in January, which means be the first time I haven't worked on my birthday in years so that's that's good news so next week so I think for the next week I'm going to be practicing my um, speech with Dave Mack in my head at every available opportunity I'll probably be running some practice sessions I might even do a practice session with you guys but then when you hear it on Dave Mack it'll be exactly the same thing that I said on my video so maybe I'll do that maybe I won't but it will hopefully get my subscribers up a little bit. I'm not desperate for subscribers. I know my channel is still at the beginning stages right now. I know that bigger things are going to come for my channel in the future. So I'm not particularly worried about how many subscribers I've got. If I lost 700 tomorrow, I really don't care. It is what it is. I know that my channel is going to be better more later on. But I'll never forget the struggle I was under. This is one thing I can promise to you guys. My channel is never going to be, okay, I may learn some tricks. I want to learn how to interview people on StreamYards. I want to learn how to do really good editing. and, and But not just, just because it's just fun to do and I want to, you know, become better at it. But in the main, the channel is always going to be... I'm going to try and keep it lighthearted. It's always going to be down to earth. I'm never going to forget the struggle of that nine and a half years. Never. I'm probably never going to be wearing much makeup. I'm probably never going to be, you know, won't be any special lighting. Not likely. Not likely. 
I always want this to be a channel that people can come to. I've actually got people now that have said they're only watching this channel. So I've now got to make a video every day, which is fine because it keeps me going, keeps me in line, keeps me accountable. So that's good. We're in Sainsbury's car park, so there's a lot of activity. A lot of activity. I've just dropped my son off for his uh, football match and there's no parking. So I've had to come over to Sainsbury's to um, just uh, to stay here for a bit while I go and tackle the non-parking situation. If you live somewhere where, they, where you can park when you go places, be grateful for that. Because in the UK, you can never park anywhere. We don't have the space go to a hospital you could be queuing for an hour to get a space when my mum was rushed into hospital in an ambulance this is irrelevant really well it's kind of relevant because it's health based but um she got rushed in by an ambulance she could have died and where was i driving around the car park looking for a space for 45 minutes i ended up just dumping it on a grass verge somewhere and taking a risk that I was going to get a parking ticket and I didn't. So if you live somewhere where you can go somewhere and just park, celebrate your little win because it's good. But yeah, I will talk about my mum a little bit in the Dave Mack interview, but not until a lot further on. I need to keep the first bit punchy, positive, and let's think of another P word, punchy, positive, and um, I don't know. I'll think of another P word later, but I've got to keep it. Last time the interview was very imperfect. It, I, there wasn't a lot of smiling. When I started the interview, I didn't thank Dave for having me on. There are so many ways I can improve on last times. I want it to go well for him. I want him to, I want people that go on it to stay on that video. You know how you watch a video sometimes and within a couple of minutes you think, I'm just not going to be able to watch all of this and other videos that right from the off you're like wow I'm probably going to watch all of this so I've really got to try and think of ways to make it sound like people are going to want to stay listening to me for the whole time I'm on there um gonna have to steal my son's bedroom again because it's 1 p.m the recording time and so yeah so that's what's happening going back on Dave Mack's channel excited but it's a big channel so you feel more a little bit more anxious about what you're going to say making sure you he's amazing at editing though and he's such a great bloke i can't see there being a problem i hope i've lost weight next week because then i can legitimately say hey dave guess what i've made all these different changes in my life and here's my new health benefits and guess what i'm finally losing weight woohoo but we will see we shall see. Um, and then there will be a third one on his channel later on, maybe six, 12 months, 18 months time when I have completed the journey and I'm slim. So yeah, still watching his channel. And now that on my weight, uh, now that I'm getting, a, now that I feel like there might be a little bit of movement in my body, I'm, um, I'm now back to watching a little bit of carnivore content again. I got myself in quite a downer and didn't want to watch any content, didn't want to watch any videos. It's almost like my... I'm going to talk about fate again now and signs, but it's almost like my body's got the memo that I was really down and it's thinking, crap, we better get some weight loss here to keep her interested because... The way she's eating right now is great. I think she's going to stick to it, but obviously she's down because I've just my I haven't I've decided not to let her lose any fat yet. Do you know what? Let's just give her a few pound weight loss to keep her interested, and it's worked. So now that I'm watching more content, that will give me some more ideas of things I can talk about on my channel. Um, so excited about the sun tomorrow. Sun is so important for our health. Do I believe the sun is being deliberately blocked out by the powers that shouldn't be? Yes, I do. I do. I don't believe in November we should have two weeks of no sun whatsoever. The day before this grey cloud came along, they were there was a lot of planes in the air squirting stuff out the back of them. That's all I'm saying. I do believe it's deliberate. I believe it's to give, give people a kick in the teeth. I believe it's to make people feel down and dejected and more, com more likely to comfort eat and comfort spend 
and to fill down and to destroy the harvests of the farmers. That's all I'm saying. I try not to bring this kind of miserable stuff in too much, but that's what I think. And it's an opinion piece and I'm allowed to say it. Um, don't move to the UK unless you absolutely have to. So I'm feeling very optimistic. Um, I don't know, I haven't really planned anything else to actually say at this point, other than I've got these three interviews like in my diary. Um, I have started to imagine being slim. I've allowed my start, myself to start to imagine this a little bit, because um, for those of you who watch my channel, you'll know that I'm someone that's never really been slim. I wasn't someone that was a, a very, very slim toned teenager and then put on a whole load of weight during pregnancy and then became overweight. I've always been the one to carry the weight around. I was a trained comfort eater from a very young age. Um, from the moment I could start eating and toddling around, I was trained to comfort eat. It's something now that um, I've had to work on and I'm on day 112 of not comfort eating. Though it's safe to say I do make sure that what I'm going to eat is going to be yummy. I'm, <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever be the person that can just eat plain beef with that's, that's quite lean with nothing, with no salt added. Maybe I will. I do like to make sure that what I eat is going to be yummy. If I'm making chicken thighs, those skins are going to be properly crispy so that they are a delicious taste. But, you know, I'm not now able to comfort eat every time I fancy it so and so because of that I don't know what it's like so when I'm dreaming about being lean I don't even know what it is I'm dreaming about which is weird so I can only really imagine I mean I was normal weight for about five minutes when I was 19 after some strict low calorie low fat misery diet where I was hungry all the time which was the start of my metabolic problems I um, I have no idea what it's like to be slim. So I find it very difficult to imagine. And most of the time, I just don't even allow myself to imagine it. But over the last, since noticing a little bit of shape change and noticing a little bit of pounds down, I'm starting to allow myself to imagine what it must be like to be able to walk into a shop and just buy anything because it looks good and not because it looks flattering or because it's black or because it might hide my bumps or because it's gonna disguise me or make me look chic while still being overweight. I can literally walk into a shop, any shop. And this needs to happen before shops still exist, by the way. In the UK, we do still just about have high streets, what's called a high street, where you can walk along and there's different kind of clothing shops and boutiques and we still do just about have that kind of thing and I need to be able to go there and do that kind of thing before it stops over the, you know so with the advent of the internet with the invention of the internet and um online shopping lots of sh the places I used to go and buy clothes are gradually closing down and I think that in the future we will lose the inter the um the high street and the boutique shops and the small little shops as we know them entirely and I think we'll end up just being able to buy clothes mail order and the dream of going into some really lovely department store with changing rooms and taking some lovely clothes into there and trying them on in front of mirrors will be a thing of the past. So I need to take advantage of that while it's still happening. So that's another why. I think I've just added another why to my list. I want to experience what it's like to be somebody that has actually lost enough weight so that most of the clothes in the shop look good. I, I'm going to give you a warning here. I'm going to give everyone a warning. Even the people around me are going to have this warning. Mutton dressed as lamb is happening in my life because sadly I've left it a little bit late to be slim. So I am going to be, <laughs> I am going to be that one walking around in her 50s in clothes that probably should be worn by people in their 20s and I'm not going to give a shit. 
So there's going to be some mutton dressed as lamb. I'm probably not going to buy any clothes that are grown up and sensible. They're probably going to be young girls clothes. Not forever. But for that first 12 months of being healthy and slim and metabolically healthy and lean. Anything goes and mutton dressed as lamb is happening. If you don't know what that expression means, it means an old person dressing in teenagers clothes. And I don't care because I want to have a go at that. And round the house, my, my family are going to be, oh my gosh, what is mum wearing now? What is she wearing now? There's probably going to be days when I'm walking around the house with some body conscious dress on with sequins on just because I can. And the kids are going to be, oh gosh, what is mum wearing to clean the chickens out? I'm going to be down the garden cleaning out the chickens, wearing some princess dress that's covered in sequins. And they'll be like, why are you cleaning out the chickens and that? I say, because I can. And don't I look good? Mummy's going to give you a twirl. That's what it's going to be. This is the image in my head right now. And I'm very amused by this image because I need to have that in my life before I get too old and have to start wearing old person's clothes. So this needs to happen before I completely and utterly go to seed, right? This needs to happen. I was watching an interview yesterday with um, Rick from Charger Mopar. He was being interviewed by... It was actually very funny. I recommend it. I'm going to pop a link in because it did make me giggle nearly all the way through. I don't know if you follow uh, the Mac, Max... Is he Max German or Max German? The young guy. He's quite young. So a lot of his... Um, some of his content doesn't really apply to me. But he has done some very good videos, actually. And, he, and, he, and he's... Even though he is quite a young, very, very fitness orientated guy, his channel hasn't felt that intimidating to me. And I have watched quite a few of his videos, but he had Rick on there. I'm going to watch it again because this is the first time that I've actually seen Max just giggling his head off. Every time Rick says something about duck food and chasing iguanas around the garden and his heart attack chicken and other things that he says, I love Rick. He's so funny love to meet him in real life and then you've got max on the other side of the screen just giggling and giggling at the same time that i'm giggling i'm going to put that link there because if you want one that's going to cheer you up if rick can't cheer you up with his iguana stories and his duck food and his bits and pieces that he talks about then there's no hope is there <laughs> i'm going to watch that one again and i'm going to share it underneath but the reason i'm talking about rick is because his hair is so dark it's so dark for his age. And people have actually accused him of um, colouring his hair. But I have to say, if you've seen a lot of Rick's content, you'll know he's the last person that's going to start colouring his hair. He's the least vain, materialistic person. He's the least last person that's going to worry what people think. There's no way he'd colour his hair. So I genuinely believe it is as dark as anything. And, you know, he's in his 50s. I can't remember his exact age off the top of my head right this second. But if eating the way he does has given him that lovely dark hair, I mean, my hair still... I mean, I have a couple of greys. A couple. But when you consider that my mum went grey, started going grey at 19, I'm thinking I'm doing quite well. Is it the fact that I do eat a lot of fat and a lot of meat? I mean, obviously, I don't smoke like she did, um, but I, I hope, I'm hoping, maybe it's a little bit genetic, maybe I take after someone else in my family that went grey late, but when you look at Rick and his dark, dark hair that actually looks like he's dipped it in ink, it's amazing. One trick he does, though, is he puts lard in his hair, which I think is hilarious. He said that when he was younger, there was all this trend of having a hair a certain way and he didn't want to have his hair the way everyone else had their hair. So he just wanted to go back to the 50s and put lard in his hair and slick it back. And I'm thinking, you are such a legend. I love people that go against the grain, against the herd and don't give a shit what people think. I love that in people. If there was more of that, I don't think we'd have the problems we had in the world right now, but let's not go off tangent. But I'm following him. Any Anyone interviewing Rick, I am there because he's always got a funny story to tell. I would absolutely love to be able to afford 
to go over there and get some of his heart attack chicken and heart attack iguana and he's great so i am back to watching the content again which means that they're going to trigger me things to say so hopefully i'm going to keep coming up with new things to say i've just realized i've done 20 minutes that's not bad for someone that had absolutely nothing planned apart from her dave mac interview next week not too bad there's so many cars flying in here oh it's painful i've now got the decision of oh i hate sainsbury's i'm not going in the shop i just asked a question and answered it myself for those of you that saw my future of food report you may not know about the future of food report let's as i'm in sainsbury's i'm going to finish on this if you're new to my channel, check back to a video that I did um, a couple of months ago called The Future of Food Report. I did one that was Sainsbury's vision of the future of how we should be eating. And then I did another one a couple of days later, which was my sort of rebuttal, if that's the right word, my sort of response to them and what I think we should be doing. Um, but of course, it's all plant based. But it doesn't start with the plant. It starts with the plant base, then it goes on to insects. And then it goes on to the delightful world of people being delivered injectable foods. This is Sainsbury's Future of Food report. I've deleted everything now. But if you want to read the whole report, it, I wouldn't because it's depressing. But the reason that I'm not going into that shop over there is because their future of food report is so disgusting. By 2169, they want us all having our foods delivered by drones and injected into our arms. Just the right nutrition that we need. Absolutely nobody eating any meat, of course, because that's all dried up because they've ruined all the farms. Which is why I have this channel because I can't sit by and see that sort of thing and not say anything about it. I cannot. So even though I'm sitting here, still obese class one, with only 112 days under my belt, I cannot just hang back, go with the flow and say nothing about what these jokers have got planned for our future of food which starts off with us all going vegan, then it all goes to us eating insects, and then it goes to injecting our stuff, us with stuff. Then I'll get a penny of my money. Hmm. I did have to get diesel. I have bought some diesel from them. I did buy some diesel from them. I see the, fu the fuel station as a bit of a separate entity and I didn't have a lot of choice. My husband used my car yesterday and ran it down to the red. It's flashing lights all over it. I'm thinking I've got to get diesel. Otherwise we're going to be breaking down on the way home just because of my principles. I'm not upsetting my little boy by breaking down because I've run out of diesel, but I'm not buying any of their food or drink. I'm not stepping over the threshold of the actual food shop because their future of food report is disgusting. My eldest son said, I wouldn't let it bother you. And then the husband says, that's not going to happen. And I'm thinking, they've already reduced meat consumption by the amount they plan to. They've already got people onto seed oils instead of, you know, a hundred years ago, if people could see the way we eat now, they would be absolutely mind blown, horrified, probably crying at the sight of the way we are now the way we eat, how we consume stuff and the way we look and the health problems. What's to say there's not going to be a hundred times worse than a hundred years from now. So I can't sit here and not say anything about that. So anyway, that's it. I don't think I need to edit anything out. I think I'm pretty much done there. And the longer the videos are, the longer it takes to edit. And I know I'm only going to get between 50 and 100 hits on it. So... I'm happy to leave it there. Tomorrow we're having some sunshine. If you're going to get some, um, go and enjoy it. I've now got to go back over to where the football's happening and um, try and find somewhere to park. <clears throat> mm. 
You do whatever it takes to keep you healthy and happy. Doing your best looks different every day. Um, and if it's not your time to be fully carnivore, go keto. And if that's not your time, go hyper carnivore. Go 70% meat, but please don't eat any seed oils. That's a good place to start. Just please don't eat any seed oils. I will see you tomorrow on day 113. Thank you so much for listening. Bye.